Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Joseph Parker is the benefactor in the new WBO rankings up to number two spot and that would make him Johnny on the spot should the WBO title be vacated by Anthony Joshua. Currently Joshua, the unified champion, has two mandatories due. He has 30 days for both the IBF and the WBO to negotiate a fight. He has to come to sort of some sort of deal to either fight Kubrat Pulev in the IBF or Alexander Usyk in the WBO. If he fails to come to some sort of arrangement with one of those guys stepping aside, he could would be stripped of the title and if that happens Alexander Usyk as the mandatory would be fighting for a vacant title and number two Joseph Parker would seemingly be the guy he would be fighting so we'll see where this goes but Joseph Parker is in as good a position as he could be in this current situation and I know for some fans they might be asking how is Joseph Parker still riding so high in the WBO rankings currently at number two he's up two spots from a month ago and yeah, it is a good question. Just the one fight in 2019 against Alex Leopold didn't necessarily set the world on fire in that one. Uh, but I guess, you know, having a promoter with Eddie Hearn, who is now promoted by, uh, that can actually have some leverage here. And David Higgins, his former promoter and current advisor slash manager, had recently also been lobbying for Joseph Parker's position in the rankings, arguing he should be higher. And some of that was down to his previous win over Andy Ruiz Jr. So no idea how much weight some of the arguments had in him climbing to number two but he essentially climbs up because he was at number four because one Tyson Fury has dropped out and two Anthony Joshua has dropped out Fury and Joshua were number two and number three respectively last month so effectively those guys being up he's bumped up to number two and why is Tyson Fury out well he is going to be having his rematch with Deontay Wilder but I was a little surprised that the WBO decided to make this move and drop him out now because that fight is not official there's no nothing else to suggest that um, something's gone on for him to be dropped other than him having this rematch with Deontay Wilder so maybe the WBO a little premature on that front and Joshua as the champion clearly cannot be in the ranking so that's why he is out but Parker number two sitting pretty for a vacant title shot should that situation come to pass at number three, Adam Kovnatsky, he's up a couple of places as well, courtesy of the same thing, Joshua and Fury out. Number three for Adam Kovnatsky, and he's ranked highly across a number of sanctioning bodies, so he has options for a potential world title shot whenever that may come for him. But like Parker, I think Kovnatsky, he needs to, if these things don't actually sort of crop up and the opportunities don't necessarily present themselves, both need to be in meaningful fights. They need to, and I wouldn't mind actually if the WBO ordered that Joseph Parker and Adam Kovnatsky as an eliminator. That would be quite an interesting fight. But both do need to have a bit of a bounce back year in 2020 because Kovnatsky started the year strong back in January, starching Gerald Washington. But since then, he's kind of been just waiting for opportunities and he had uh, filled some time with that Areola fight, which ended up being a bit tougher than maybe fans expected but the style matchup it made for a good fight but maybe didn't necessarily flatter Kovnatsky in the scheme of things but he needs to be fighting I think guys uh, at a slightly higher level than Areola because he really is uh, at the back end of his career and faded from his prime which was basically a decade ago but at number four you have uh, former unified champion Andy Ruiz Jr. into the rankings so he uh, loses to Joshua Joshua goes to the champion status Ruiz reclaims a ranking spot number four here hopefully with Ruiz and I'll cover this off in a separate video I want to talk about his potential prospects within the heavyweight division because there are fights out there for him good fights but will he be active in the next six to 12 months that's the big question he had more than a year out after his loss to Joseph Parker at the back end of 2016 so I hope we do see him sooner rather than later 
Daniel Dubois, he's up one spot this month. He is the uh, international champion facing Kyotaru Fujimoto this weekend. So apologies if you listen to this after this fight, but uh, beating Fujimoto probably keeps him about where he is. I don't see that necessarily bumping him up too much, although Fujimoto has made a surprise appearance in these rankings, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But this is a career high in the WBO number five, and that would seemingly be the path, I think, that Daniel Dubois will look to work his way down for a potential title shot, most likely in 2021 or 2022. Probably looking to, because he's in the Frank Warren stable on a bit of an island, there's only really Joe Joyce and Nathan Gorman there that he can fight in the immediate future. He's already fought Gorman, but maybe we see a Joyce and Dubois fight at the back end of 2020. But the mandatory path would be seemingly what Frank Warren would look to sort of push him down uh, in the immediate future. At number Number six, up one place this month, is Junior Farr from New Zealand. He has the Oriental title, one of a number of guys in this ranking list with uh, WBO regional straps. Be good to see Junior Farr taking a bigger step up in 2020. He fought Dominic Gwynn earlier this year. He was dropped in that one. He had a tougher than expected fight against Devin Vargas. But it's really time now for the unbeaten New Zealander to really sort of put that record on the line, have a, a bigger step up fight, see where he's really at. On the strength of his draw against uh, Alexander Povetkin, Michael Hunter up one place this month. Yevgeny Romanov, he has the WBO global title, also up one spot. He's uh, had a decent year, actually a decent sort of 18 months or so. He beat Deontay Wilder in the amateurs, that's his claim to fame, but he has uh, amassed a few decent looking wins, uh, not at a hugely high level, but he's starting to work his way into the position where he's going to have the step up fights that we should expect. So hopefully we see that in 2020 and a guy who's up five spots this month is Derek Chisora he has the intercontinental title and some people might ask the question well does this mean he could be potentially in line for an Alexander Usyk fight what if um, the belt was vacated and they made Usyk and Chisora for the title well You can never rule it out. I guess uh, there would be lobbying from all directions about who would be fighting for that title. And I'm sure now he's inside the top 10. That um, makes for a better argument than against a guy who's number 14. So maybe there has been some uh, promotional sort of push there to try and get him inside the top 10. That fight in Alexander Usyk versus Derek Chisora, arguably in a business sense, might make more money if they held it in the UK as a pay-per-view. Parker and Usyk, where would you hold that? Maybe that would make more sense either in the Ukraine or the United States. At number 10, we have the return of Zhili Zhang, who fought in Monaco against Andre Redenko just a month or so ago. He is now back into the top 15 after a period out of the rankings. He had been riding high for a year or two in the rankings, but slowly fell down and out. It was a similar situation with Kyotaru Fujimoto. Inactivity clearly cost uh, Zhang and also Fujimoto, but now he's back into the rankings. And you see here next to his name, he has the uh, Oriental, which I'm assuming is interim title um it used to be the other way with junior far far had the interim version and zhang had the full title so obviously they've restored some sort of um, minor title to zhang here following that win and number 11 one of the few guys who doesn't move at all is frank sanchez foray at number 12, one of the few guys who actually falls in the rankings is Germany's, and according to the WBO, clearly a typo here, Tom Schwartz. So Tom Schwartz had been at number 10 last month, down a couple of places. And just to note, this is from the WBO's website. So all the ranking videos that I do, I take their material and I use it. So I've had a number of comments in different videos about um, spellings and also where people are from, etc. I don't actually come up with these graphics. It is the organizations themselves. So they've got a spelling mistake here, calling him Ton. Uh, Yeah, that is what it is. Dempsey McKean holds firm at number 13. He had been hoping to fight Lucas Brown in 2020. Seemingly not going to happen now. I'll cover that off in another video. At number 14, Philip Hergovic enters the WBO rankings, and I believe for the first time, he's at number 14, and that follows his win over Eric Molina in Saudi Arabia on December 7th. And returning into the top 15, and I don't know how, and it does seem a little bit strange, Kyotaru Fujimoto. So bear in mind, in the past uh, just over a year, he's had two fights, and they were both against the same guy. And that guy, Sutat Kalilek, was a former middleweight. 
So maybe he's been bumped up into the top 15 here to give slightly more credibility to the fight with Daniel Dubois, but that one will be over early. Daniel Dubois will get the knockout. That's my pick in that one. And below the top 15, you've got uh, a couple of stars here denoting who knows what. Eric Pfeffer, he is the WBO Europe title. There is no key to explain why he is listed just under the top 15. So make of it what you will. But what do you make of it all? Joseph Parker climbing to number two, seemingly in line for a title shot should the WBO title become vacant. And Derek Chisora up five places. Is he still in the mix? It's a question. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.